Uh, my name's Michael Westaway, and I'm uh, from the Queensland Museum. I'm an archaeologist at the Queensland Museum. Uh, well, today I presented at Palimpsest Number 8, and I talked about the uh, deep human history of the Willandra Lakes World Heritage Area, which is one of the most significant archaeological and cultural landscapes in the Southern Hemisphere. It extends back from 50,000 years ago and shows how Aboriginal people adapted to pretty significant climate change uh, over that long period of time coming up to the last glacial phase, that last peak ice age. And that was pretty much the focus of my talk, how they were able to adapt to those sort of conditions. The Willandra Lakes World Heritage Area is one of Australia's oldest archaeological sites and why it, it's so significant is because it also uh, contains continual occupation in that landscape from 50,000 years ago right up until the very recent past. And it shows how Aboriginal people adapted to significant change in that system. It started off as a lake system full of water, then it starts to get more arid and more saline. Uh, and, and around the peak of the last ice age, around 18,000 years ago, it becomes more like Tiao de Fuego, a really harsh, arid place to live in. Um, and throughout that landscape, we see archived in the great lunettes, those dunes, evidence of um, adaptation and change over that period of climatic stress. Uh, my involvement has been largely through excavations at one of the world's largest fossil trackway sites, showing a family group moving across the landscape of the Willandra, and also um, by studying the, the actual remains of the people themselves. Uh, there are over 100 fossils dating back to the last ice age to 42,000 years ago. Um, and I've studied those in relation to other early fossils of modern humans across the world, trying to put them into that international context. The most famous discoveries at the Willandra Lakes and Mungo are the human remains of Mungo man and Mungo woman that date to around 42,000 years ago. And they basically uh, show modern humans living in that system uh, at a time much earlier than modern humans had actually moved into Europe. So it's quite significant to give us an insight into what people looked at all that time ago. And uh, Mungo woman is very significant as she represents the world's earliest cremation. Um, and Mungo man, well, there's a whole range of reasons why he's so significant. There's so much information tied up in his bones. It's an osteobiography. Each bone tells a little bit about his story. And there's evidence about uh, the, the, the lifestyle that he lived. Um, he was interred with a large amount of ochre, which was transported probably from over 200 kilometres ago. So it gives us an indication of long distance exchange over 42,000 years ago. So there's some really complex uh, systems in place that we get an insight into by seeing these very ancient human remains. The, the Willandra seems to be a, a dramatic landscape that inspires a lot of people. And all the time that I've worked there, there's always been fairly strong artistic community presence uh, coming to the landscape and, and trying to find some meaning from it. So the scientists are trying to find meaning from it in a very different way. They're looking at human response to climate change, development of new technologies to, to adjust to significant shifts in climate. Uh, we study the actual remains of the people themselves to see how microevolution may have changed and modelled the people. We look at the animals that became extinct and how people may have had an impact in that. Um, there's a very scientific way of trying to understand that. But then, you know, we often interact with artists in that, in that landscape who are trying to understand, I guess, uh, the meanings of that landscape in a very different way. So, personally, I haven't had a great deal of interaction with the two communities, but I, I think they're both seeking meaning in, in a similar sort of landscape. And there should really be ground for the two to meet and exchange those ideas. And that's why I think forums like this are important, because um, certainly we get people like me and the other presenters providing a scientific perspective, but then we get this wonderful artistic interpretation of the same sort of landscape, and it makes us both think about it in different ways. So it opens no, new avenues of inquiry, I suppose. Music